me, the thrill of elk hunting is calling elk. It's, uh, it's something that's on my mind every single day. There's nothing that I have found audibly that even comes close to the bugle of a bull elk. I grew up in the heart of elk country. Public land was right out my back door. So, you know, it's something I was born into. I was inspired at a young age to follow in the footsteps of those who shaped elk calling as we know it today. A lot's changed and I think it's my goal to make sure that this passion lives on. been in my blood since a, a young age and it's provided the framework and the path for me to follow uh, throughout my life and, and helped form and, and shape who I am and who I'm hoping to become still. that the, the pioneers of elk calling were really establishing the framework that we have today. And I can remember buying Larry D. Jones elk calls and Wayne Carlton elk calls, waiting with anticipation for the next Truth About Big Bulls DVD to come out from Primos. Having that passion in my home, having a father who was an elk guide and outfitter and an accomplished elk caller, those people really lit the fire in me and, and blazed that trail that I walk today. When I first started out elk hunting, back in the late 60s and mostly in the 70s. You could shoot either sex with a rifle, bulls, cow, didn't matter. So we didn't pay a whole lot of attention to bugling. It was more for locating and just see if we could find an elk and then shoot a cow if it was in the area or if a bull stepped out. Like my dad said, you shoot one with horns, you know, you're eating <laughs> you're horns eating too. You're eating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was very obstinate about us not shooting bulls and making sure we got a good cow to eat. But then in 1970, the Idaho Fish and Game changed the laws to where it's bulls only. And it kind of forced us into a position of wanting to learn how to call elk in. It's like a foreign language, and the tones and pitches, the cadence, and really the emotion you put into the calls is vital for speaking to the elk in a way that conveys your messages effectively. It's pretty amazing if you stop and think about those who figured this out and made it more accessible for our generation. I still remember some of the first elk hunting videos that came out when I was learning about hunting and calling elk and just how excited I was to sit down and immerse myself and really learn everything I could about elk and elk calling. Elk Fever with Dwight Chu, Steve Jones, Jay Reyes, Larry D. Jones. Larry is nationally recognized for his elk calling and hunting. In addition to serving as president of Wilderness Sound Productions, Larry is an outdoor writer, photographer, video producer, and seminar speaker. How old are you? I went right to those. Uh, I'm 41. Oh, uh, yeah, you, you wasn't hardly born back then. Uh, I, I started hunting in 86 or 87. Oh. 
So I, I, I first started bow hunting in 61. Yeah. yeah. We had an elk up here, and during the rut, I went up there and listened to him bugle. Actually, I was trying to get him bugle with the curly cue and all that stuff, <laughs> and, and uh, he wouldn't. I'm going around a little, a little frustrated, you know. Down in the, the city, because it was right up on a hill here, somebody had screeched their brakes, <laughs> and he bugled back to it. <laughs> so I heard him, and I started trying to do that with my voice. Voice bugling back there, and there was hardly anybody, you know. That's why people are starting to go like, what are you doing here, yeah. Larry, you know? So today, a special treat, as one of the world's top elk callers joins us. Wayne Carlton is here to show us just how he does it. Wayne, welcome to the new show. Thank you. Good to be here. Give us a demonstration, if you would. I'll, I'll, I'll try to show you what it's like. It's fairly loud, so I'll tone it down. All right. <laughs> now, what was that elk doing? That was a call to fight. Well, that was a challenge from one bull to another. Uh, she asked me to do it outside or in the car. <laughs> oh, that was very interesting. Wasn't that something? Yeah, Wasn't I enjoyed that. It was spring turkey season, and there was a young, like a four or five point bull across the draw from us. So I just bugled at him because I had learned how to do it that winter. And that first bugle, he bugled back in the springtime. I said, boy, maybe in for something here. <laughs> how hard was it to call in elk back then? It was like, Getting out of the pickup. <laughs> and I heard this scream. And when you don't grow up with it, and you grew up in the swamps of Florida, you don't hear that stuff. It just put chill bumps up and down my back. So did you come back out with an idea of, of being able to replicate the sounds, or was your first time out, no idea? about calling the elk? My first time out was not even thinking about calling elk. My second time wasn't. But then after another experience at a wallow and seeing how majestic and how they tear trees up, then I was trying to figure out how to make those calls to the point I even got clarinets and tried to use those, those reeds. <laughs> I tore a couple of clarinets up, but I still couldn't figure it out. Turkeys, wild turkeys make a, you know, key key run, yeah. And just doing that with the diaphragm made me think that, God, that ain't that far from that elk bugle I heard. I've been hunting elk now for well over 30 years, and I still am like a little kid every time I hear an elk bugle. There's just something magical about it that uh, it just resonates deep within the, the heart of an elk hunter. When I came out with this call, this might be the very call, in fact. The first was 1980 when I used this call. I called in 13 bulls, 30 yards and under, in 11 days. And for me, that was pretty darn good. Yeah. This was the first elk call I used. <laughs> and you know, you just, you can get three notes out by plugging yeah. it like that. And, Is that uh, something you made? Yeah, this is something I made. Yeah. So I probably called in more elk doing this call alone than any other. Yeah. You want the diaphragm story? I got the idea that if I went to the hospital and bugled on my diaphragm call and let them shoot an x-ray of it at the same time, I could see where it fit in my mouth. So I sashayed up to this young girl in the white <laughs> Uniform and my friend of mine, a doctor, had already made the arrangements and I went in there and she says, can I help you? I said, yes ma'am, I came in to get a picture of my diaphragm while I was blowing on it. As you know, being a game caller, there's so much to say to wildlife and I just try to make myself understand what can I say to make that critter be so excited he, he's going to do what I ask him to. A lot of people just go out there and call and try to 
mimic something they heard on TV or whatever. Yeah. But the best way to say it is I just mean what I say when I'm calling. Yeah. And, you got to yeah. put emotion into that call and yeah. say something with yeah. it. There's, there's definitely a pattern to my calling. It's super simple, but I always want to get in the last word. I want to make that bull respond to me, and when he responds, I instantly want to cut him off. If I want to use that emotion and that aggression, because I'm trying to communicate to him that I want to fight. That emotion is, it's ingrained in those elk. And if you can trip that trigger to fight, it doesn't matter if it's a spike or if it's a great big herd bull, they still have that desire to come in and fight. You know, I don't measure an elk by the size of his antlers, but more by the size of his bugle. It's not about how big the bull is, it's about how big the fight is that I have with the bull. You know, I can still remember my dad, his question that he asked me just has stuck with me forever. And he just said, what are you trying to tell the elk? My calling was spot on, my calling was beautiful, but there was no purpose behind my calling. And so just my dad making that one comment to me stuck with me and really shaped the way that I call elk. trying to build call and they were they were as good as I could make but then I met your daddy Rocky in Michigan at a show and I keep hearing this incredible bugling and cow call and so I kind of walked away from my booth and I went over and I looked and there was this guy that I watched and said man you are darn good I, I want to learn that call is different he says yeah I got a patent applied for it and I call it the pallet plate y'all want to see the stamping room where the parts are made for the elk call these are the actual pallet plate front frames or elk call. If you gotta have a sliding note, you don't wanna break it like a turkey call. It's gotta go from a high to a low and it's gotta slide. And there's a turkey, it's eeyaw. Solving that problem that Rocky did, made mouth calls for elk, put them into the space age. It was great. Still great. When I ended up designing the pilot plate diaphragm, it was, it was more to help people able to use a mouth diaphragm, <laughs> me too. Yeah. Phone calls after phone calls of people calling and saying what a terrific call. They got me my elk this year, and my first elk, and some people say it gets my elk every year. Not a lot of people out there that get elk every year. I think people just kind of started recognizing what we were really about. And it wasn't that we were trying to show off for people. We were just trying to show them that, hey, we love elk calling, we love elk hunting, and this is what we do and you have a mouth call diaphragm. And the real test, real test, if you think you can blow one, you know how. <coughs> Not bad for a beginner. <coughs> <coughs> I progressed in elk hunting and started 
realizing what it took to be consistently successful, uh, the natural evolution there is to hunt with a team. Caller really becomes the quarterback. The caller's responsibility is to bring that bull in to the setup for the shooter. camaraderie of being together, of hunting with someone that has the same purpose and the same goal and the same uh, desire to be successful. It's just a, a group of friends coming together, working together. We want each other to fill our tag as much or more than we want to fill our own tag. Be able to provide meat for our family, be a part of something successful, be able to overcome the challenges that are an inherent part of elk hunting is a great reward. My name is Larry D. Jones, and on this tape, I will demonstrate how to use the Jones Grunt Diaphragm, the Larry D. Jones Elk Call, and the Imitator Elk Call. I will try to teach you how to do the grunts and the squeals, plus the bugles. And let's say you bump a cow, and she is the only animal that saw you. Maybe she wasn't quite sure what you were. One voice might excite one bull. Another bull, that voice won't work. Let's say that you're using the Larry D. Jones Elk Bugle. but he eventually takes off. No shot. Well, that wraps it up. How does this sound with the call? And then I go... <coughs> I did a seminar almost every weekend, sometimes too many weekends for months. Uh, until hunting season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always... Somebody called me and said, could you come up September... <laughs> I could laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I just laugh out loud. <laughs> you kidding? I'm already booked for that week. Yeah. Were people hungry for information back then on hunting? You know, people are hungry for hunting information today. thousands of elk hunters in the country that have a desire to go elk hunting but really don't have a, a framework to be able to start on or don't have the experience or the background to even know where to start or, or how to go about it. I created the website elk101.com just as a resource to be able to share with other people uh, ideas to make them better elk hunters. The, the goal is to increase their knowledge, which in turn will increase their confidence, and I feel that knowledge and confidence are what, what lead to success. There are those who have put in the time and have paid their dues learning the hard way uh, that look at something like that website and say, well, that's not fair, you know, I had to put in my time and now you're giving all this information away. It's going to cheapen the experience for someone else. And at the end of the day, I, I really don't agree with that. 
to make sure that it's, it's not lost and that it's passed on to today's elk hunters is important. You know, more than just being an elk hunter, being an advocate for public lands and for habitat for elk and for conservation groups who support that way of life. Public land is important. Private land is important. Through hunting and through elk hunting, especially the passion for being there, seeing God's creation, seeing the sunrises and sunsets that can only happen in the West. Sure, they're beautiful here, but when you've got mountains and snow and golden aspens, and some of the aspens even turn red, depending on how they turn during that year, and those leaves are falling and they're, they're catching into the spruce trees, and you see these things, and you got to realize how much you had to be thankful for. A lot more than just shooting an elk every it season. It is a whole lot more than just shooting an elk. And then learning about the habitat and seeing the invasive things that happen that we've allowed and being able to stop that so the elk can have food and have cover to raise their young and to go through the winter and to, and to have carters to travel. And we need to share it with as many people as we can. You teach somebody to love something, they'll want to protect it. I usually use this type, but I got a pallet expander in, so I can't use reeds. At this point in my life, the pinnacle reward is to be able to see other people be successful, to be able to share my experiences and the blessings I've had of learning about elk and elk calling with someone else in a way that contributes to their success. And when that happens to be your son or your daughter, I can't think of a greater reward.
my children embrace something I'm passionate about and to see them be successful in that passion. My vision really became about them and the next generation. It shifted from thinking about this season to thinking about next season and thinking about several seasons after that to make sure that there are elk not only for my children to call in, but that there will still be elk for my grandchildren to call in, that there will be places for my children and grandchildren to go to hunt elk. As a father, that's really what it's all about, sharing these experiences to ensure that the future of elk calling lives on. 17 years of falling timber, and now I'm making calls. I'm not a, a logger no more. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on building them and try to figure out different things that I can do to make them even better. So many people say, why are you still hunting? I, I can't believe you still got to drive. If I'd have stopped now, uh, that's the end of the story. We still got places to go and critters to call. That's right. I'll be 75 here in a month, and uh, I can't wait until next elk season. <laughs> <laughs> if I can, I'll hunt every day of it. What's been most rewarding for you in that whole journey, starting in your garage? I can tell you that so quickly. The most rewarding and I'm emotional about it is seeing the people that came for the ride and watching them become more than they ever dreamed they could be and watching them be successful. Today, leadership is all about influence. It's not about yeah. authority. It's not about being able to tell somebody what to do. Do you influence enough people in a positive way? They become part of a family and they become part of what you're doing and they believe in it. As the mountain man would say, wow, you nailed him clean, Pilgrim. <laughs> well, hey, I wouldn't mind returning the favor. You did a great job calling that guy in for me. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's, that that's my pleasure well, for my good well, friend you and did a great job, my buddy. best hunting partner. Well, thank you. I Enjoy appreciate it. it. It was great. The day that you tarry is the day that you lose. Sunshine or thunder. Man will always wonder where the fair wind blows. Where the fair wind blows.